titles are a hugely important part of any movie. You only have to look at David Fincher's films to see how effective they can be at wrapping you up in the mood of the movie you're about to watch. I wanted Extraction Protocol's titles to do just this, and I also wanted to slightly reference the style seen in the original Deus Ex Human Revolution trailers that were released back in 2010. Let's take a closer look at the main title and see how it's constructed. First we have our basic particle string. I made a couple of these in the single particle simulator, then duplicated it several times and moved them all around a bit to fill the screen. These were all then parented to a rotating point, so that they'd all orbit around the centre of the screen. A completely separate particle simulator was created for the yellow dust. This is quite subtle, but it helps to give more context to the position of the items in 3D space. A simple turbulence force was added, and this was also parented onto the rotator point. The particle systems were all looking a little bit flat, so a couple of lights were added to give it a dark, moody appearance. Text was added, and its opacity was keyframed, so that it gradually fades in. A pretty extreme yellow glow was added to the entire shot, followed by a vignette blur around the edges. Finally, a camera move was added, rotating the camera and moving it into position. All the other titles for the film were created using a variation on this setup. OK, so let's go from the start. If you want to give this a go yourself, go to the link on screen to download some project files. You'll also find that link on the hitfilm.com blog and in the YouTube video description. First up, we'll create a new composite shot, which is where we'll do all of our work. I'll go with the standard 1080p25 template. If you're in the US, you might want to go for the 1080p29.97 template. Let's start with that main stringy particle effect. We'll drag on a particle simulator to get started. This is actually a really simple particle effect, so it won't take too long. First we'll open it up to get the emitter shape properties and turn on keyframing for position. I'll now move forwards a few seconds and move the emitter to a new position. You want to make sure that you're moving the emitter shape position and not the actual layers position. To do this, just click on the shape section in the controls panel before you get started. OK, now I'll move forward a few more seconds and move the emitter again. It doesn't really matter where it goes, as it just needs to give the impression of random movement. Make sure you move it about in Z space as well, so that it gets some depth. Alright, we've now got the basic movement. Let's go into the particle system's movement properties and change the speed down to zero. This means that when particles are emitted, they won't actually go anywhere. They'll just stay where they are until they die. Kind of depressing, but that's the lot of a particle. The result is a nice little worm-like trail. Right, let's beef up the life property, so that the particles last for as long as the shot. The particles now draw a nice curvy line. This is probably a good point to add a texture, rather than just using the default white circle. For the extraction protocol titles, I actually drew a custom texture that was meant to look a little bit like an irregularly shaped circuit board. It was done very quickly, so it isn't exactly a work of art. In fact, it looks a little bit like a child's drawing, but it worked fine for the shot. You can make your own texture using Photoshop or GIMP or whatever image editor you like to use, uh, but you'll find this texture included in the project files that you can download for this tutorial. To import the texture, go to the Appearance section and click the yellow folder icon. The new texture is much larger than the default one, so let's go to the movement properties and change the scale down to about 15%. We've actually got far too many particles being spawned, which is why this line looks so smooth. We want a more jagged appearance, so in the particle system's general properties, let's drop the number of particles per second down to just 5. Don't forget you can change particle properties in any order you want. When I first created this shot, it was through experimentation. So after you finish this tutorial, make sure you just have a play around with the different properties to see what you get. OK, we're getting there, but you can see that all the textures are exactly the same way around. To fix this, go back to the Appearance section and untick Billboard. This enables each particle to point in a different direction rather than straight towards the camera. I'll then activate Align to Motion. This automatically rotates the texture depending on its trajectory. Finally, let's add a bit more variation to the effect. In Appearance Variation, I'll increase the texture angle variation, which ensures that every particle has a different rotation. Then in movement variation, I'll change the scale variation to about 6. OK, it's time to change the colour, which we can do in the appearance section. We'll go for this default orange. It's also worth increasing the colour variation, although not too much as that makes it look completely mental. Around 10% is enough. Now that we have our particle string, let's select the particle simulator layer on the timeline and hit Ctrl D to duplicate it. I'll spin it around and move it to a new position, then make another duplicate. Again, rotate and reposition using the viewer widgets. Once we've got a few of those going, we can now move on to creating the dust. This is a completely separate particle simulator, so let's drag on a new one from the effects panel. 
We'll rename this by pressing F2 and typing in dust, just so that we can easily identify it. First let's go to the emitter shape properties and change the type to sphere. I'll then increase the radius so that it fills the frame. This means that the particles will be created at random positions within that sphere shape. In the particle system we'll bring in another texture. Let's use the circle blur texture, which is nice and simple. I'll also change the colour to the same orange as the other particles. In the movement group, let's increase the life to 30 seconds to make sure the particles stay on screen. Then drop the speed down to zero and reduce the scale to 10%. In movement variation, I'll change the scale variation to 10% as well. This means that the scale of any individual particle can vary between 0% and 20%. Now for the fun bit. Clicking the Add button next to the Forces property group adds a new force. We'll change the type to Turbulence and reduce the strength all the way down to 1%. This now causes the particles to move about randomly in a kind of swarm-like behaviour. There's rather too many particles whizzing about by the time we're a few seconds in, so let's just scrub through the timeline and find the point where there's a good amount. In the Emitter General section, I'll now turn on keyframing for the active property by clicking the grey circle. I'll then move forward one frame and uncheck the toggle. That means that no new particles will be created from this frame onwards. The shot looks a lot more dynamic if the particle systems are all rotating. While I could animate each one separately, it's much easier and a lot quicker to use a point to drive them all. To start with, I'll add a new point from the New Layer menu. And then in its transform group, I'll turn on keyframing for the rotation Y property. I'll then skip to the end of the composite shot and increase the number of turns to 4. Back on the first frame, I'll now select all the particle simulators by clicking on the top one in the timeline list, then holding shift and clicking on the bottom one. I can now select the new point for all of the layers using the parent menu. Scrubbing through, you can see that all the particle effects are now rotating with the point layer. While I've got them selected, I'll also turn on motion blur. While I remember, I'll actually rename the point to rotator, again just for reference. One side effect of the motion blur technique is that it can introduce slight transparency to particle effects, which you don't always want. To counter this easily, you can just use the alpha boost property in the particle system's appearance group. We'll just increase that for each of the particle string layers. All the particles are a bit too clear and bright. This is because HitFilm is just using a basic ambient light which hits 3D layers from all directions. It makes them easy to see and easy to work with, but it isn't very atmospheric. Let's add a new light layer to fix this. New light layers default to a point light, which emanates light in all directions from a specific point and is instantly much more compelling. I'll just move the light down a bit so that it's right in the centre of the frame. I'll also take this opportunity to hit F2 and rename it Key Light. The problem with this is that some of the particles are pointed away from the light, so they aren't receiving any light at all. To counter this, we'll add a second light. For this one, I'll go into its layer properties and change it to an ambient light. This is pretty similar to the default lighting setup, so objects are now lit equally from all sides. It's far too bright though, so in the light properties, let's drop the intensity down. If I drop it all the way to zero, it leaves only those particles lit by the point light. What I actually want is to set it to about 5, so that every particle does have some lighting, even if it's subtle. I'll rename this one Fill Light. Now it's pretty clear that the point light is still too bright. We don't want big bright yellow particles. I'll select the point light on the timeline, and then go to its light properties. I'll drop the intensity for this one down to about 35. By setting up both these lights, we have a nice moody shot. Working with lights in HitFilm is kind of similar to working with real lights on a set. It's all about getting that balance between different types of lights. Now it's time to put some text in. I'll select the text tool in the viewer by clicking on the T button, then draw out my text box. You can type in whatever you want your title to be, and choose a font and size that suits. By default, text layers are 2D, so that you can see that as I scrub through the project, the text is always in front of the particles. Similarly, if I move the text layer to the bottom of the timeline, the text would always be behind the particles. I actually want the text to be right in the middle of them. To do this, I'll toggle it to be a 3D layer using the timeline toggle here. You can see that the particles are now moving through and around the text. The text has ended up being really dull though, due to our lights being set quite low. While the lighting's good for the particles, it's not so good for the text. I'll simply go to the text layer's material properties and uncheck Illuminated. This means that lights won't have any actual effect on the text layer. 
Finally, we need to do a spot of grading. To begin, add a grade layer to the timeline. As you might have seen in other tutorials, grade layers can be used to grade every layer underneath them. To do this, we'll add a glow effect. We need to play around the settings to get the right kind of glow that we want though. First up, we'll go into the advanced section and tick use A and B colors. This means rather than the glow deriving from the colors of the layers, the glow will be made up of our own selected colors. Let's change the A color to our good old familiar orange. The next step is to boost up the intensity so that we can actually see the glow. Currently it's only glowing on the really bright parts of the frame because our threshold is set to 40%. If I drop this down to 0%, you can see that it's now affecting the entire frame, even the dark areas. Lastly, let's increase the radius until we get a nice soft glow. We'll now add another grade layer. I'll use this one to add a subtle blur vignette around the edge of the frame. First I'll just drop on a normal blur effect. As you can see, it affects the entire frame. With the ellipse mask tool in the viewer, I'll now draw an oval shaped mask around the center of the frame. In the mask's properties, I'll invert it, which means only the area outside of the mask is affected. I'll also boost the feather property way up so that you can't tell where the edge of the mask actually is. For the finishing touches, I'll also animate the text layer's opacity property so that it gradually fades in, and keyframe the camera so that it pushes in on the text slowly. Hopefully from this tutorial, you can see how making small adjustments in key areas could completely change the visual appearance of the title. Have a play around with different particle textures and settings, and different animations on the camera to see what you can come up with. We'll have more Extraction Protocol tutorials coming up soon, plus a behind the scenes look at the shoot itself, so if you don't want to miss those, make sure you subscribe. As always, any feedback let us know in the comments, or over on Facebook or Twitter, or of course on the hitfilm.com blog. Okay, thank you for watching, we shall see you next time.